Week 10, problem 3. The wave function for a traveling wave on a taut string is, in SI units, this. Okay, what are the speed and direction of the wave? Okay, um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this into the terms that I like. So when I had discussed in the previous problem, I prefer my wave functions to be like so. Equals, I'm going to say amplitude sine 2 pi over lambda x minus vt. And then we can do plus a phase angle, which is just movement from one side to the other. All right, so let's see here. I'm going to start by factoring out a 2 pi. So I'm going to say equals 0 0.3 sine. Actually, I'm going to factor out a negative 2 pi. So I'm going to do negative 2 pi. And that will give us um, x minus 6t. 12 pi divided by negative 2 pi. I think that's, yeah, that's negative 6. True. Ah, now I gotta do the pi over 4. Pi over 4 hmm, divided by 2 pi over 1 equals pi over 4 multiplied by the reciprocal. 1 over 2 pi. Cancel, cancel equals 1 over 8. Okay. And that's gonna be negative 1 8 because it should be negative 2 pi is what I'm dividing by. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to rewrite this guy one more time to get rid of that negative. Because you really can't have a negative um, wavelength, per se. So, sine of, I'm going to say, and then I'm going to say 2 pi over 1. That way it's obvious that the wavelength is 1. x minus. 6t minus 1 8th. Bam! That's what I'm going to go with right there. Alright, what are the speed and direction of travel of the wave? Alright, so we have, this is the velocity right there. Let's make this a more aesthetically pleasing color. Oh, right there, that's the velocity, v. So we're moving at 6 meters per second and it's moving to the right because as discussed pri previously, that negative is normally there if this is positive. So that's negative and then a positive number, you're going to have a um, positive direction. Um, if that's a negative, so if it's like a plus 6t, then I look at that as negative, negative 6t, which then would mean it's moving to the left. But it's not, it's moving to the right. What is the vertical position of an element on the string at t equals 0, x equals 2? All right. So. They gave us two specific numbers, so I'm just going to plug them in. 0 0.3 sine of 2 pi, and then they said x equals 0 0.2 minus 0 minus, because 0 times uh, 6 is just going to be 0, minus 1 which equals, let's see, 0.2 is the same as 1 fifth. So 1 fifth minus 1 eighth. Let's convert that to 40ths. So this will be 8 40ths minus 5 40ths equals 3 40ths times 2 pi would be 6 pi over 40. 6 pi, 340 is 3, yeah, OK. So then we're going to have negative 0 0.3 sine of 6 pi over 40. OK. Negative 3 times sine of 6 pi over 40. And that gives us, bum, bum, bum negative 1.36
That can't be right. That cannot be right. Negative 0.3. There we go. Bam. Because sine can't be bigger than 1. So if you get an amplitude that's bigger than your amplitude, you're wrong. 0.136. Got it. Negative 0 0.136. Negative 0 0.136, right? What is the wavelength of the wave? So here, wavelength, right there, 1. That's why I put in that 1 there. Um, 2 pi over 1 looks kind of silly, but it's, you know, it's going to be 2 pi over lambda. So it's easier if you just write it in. What is the frequency of the wave? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to approach this one a little bit differently. I could have approached the... Um, wavelength like this. And actually I probably should have. All right. So this is our wavelength equation. I'm going to do it right there. Bam. So our wavelength is So the wavelength is just how long it is, how the distance between two identical points on the wave. I'm going to say this is our wave. So the wavelength is going to be this distance right here. So what we got to do is we got to find where this is equals this, zero. So I'm going to find this point here, and then there's another identical way that's going to start right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the um, distance between those points. So I we can say that because um, um, what time here does is it just like the wave function with just x gives us an infinite number of y values for any x value we plug in. And then the t, it basically gives us an infinite number of times where we can then relook at that equation. So we can say that time equals anything we want, and that will still give us an equation with the same wavelength. The time does not change the wavelength. So I'm going to say that t equals 0. Actually, even better than that, I'm going to say that T is, what's 6 times 8? Um, 48. So I'm going to say it's negative 1 over 48. Long story short, 6 times T, negative 6 times T, is going to look equal exactly 1 eighth. So I'm going to say that these two just cancel each other out. Because we can pick T to be whatever we want. So then we're going to have sine, we have negative 0.3, sine of 2 pi over 1 times x equals zero. Okay? So we're gonna find the, f so this, we're gonna divide both sides by negative 3.3, .3. that goes away because it doesn't matter in terms of wavelength. So we're left with this guy right here. So sine of, so the two identical points we're gonna have are gonna be when this guy is zero. So if we have a, you know, your standard wavelength, we're gonna have zero, and then we're gonna have another wave exactly identical start at two pi. So we're going to have this guy equal to 0, or the inside equal to 0, and we're also going to have that inside equal to 2 pi. And since that's you know one wavelength, that's going to be defined, the distance between those two is going to define the wavelength. So we're going to find that when x is equal to those. So, so this in por inside portion equals 0. So that says when you solve that, you get x equals 0. So when this inside portion equals zero, that's going to be the start of the first wave. For the next wave, which is going to start at two pi, this inside portion is going to equal two pi. I know it sounds overly complicated, but if you can actually look at the equation and understand that, it'll make it easier to fumble through um, later problems when you just don't have the formulas memorized. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to say two pi over one times x equals two pi. So divide both sides by 2 pi, multiply the 1 over there, x equals 1. So the first wave starts at 0, the second wave starts at 1. We take the difference between them, and we get the wavelength, which is 1. So that was a long way of finding out the exact same thing I said over here, which is like, oh yeah, lambda, 1, right there, bam. So this is the actual justification for why it is. And that's how I'm going to find, I'm going to do the same thing, 
with frequency. All right. So I'm going to take the exact same equation we started with, right here. I'm going to go down here, draw my picture. I love pictures in life. We have our wave. And I'm going to find the time it's going to take it's going to take to go from one side to the other. So doing everything else, I'm going to look at this point right here, that point here, where the first wave starts and the second wave starts, or the first iteration of the wave starts until the wave starts repeating itself. Um, so set this guy equal to zero. And we can choose x to be whatever it wants. I'm going to say x equals 1 eighth. So the phase angle cancels. And it kind of, the phase angle just moves it from left to right. And it intuitively makes sense that the phase angle, the left or right portion, is not going to affect the frequency or the wavelength. Divide both sides by negative 0.3. We're left with sine of 2 pi over 1 times negative 6t equals 0. All right? So the wave is going to start. We're going to have the first wave start when this equals 0. We're going to have the second wave start when that equals 2 pi. So now we're going to have 2 pi over 1 times negative 6t equals 0. So simplifying this a little, we have negative 12 pi t equals 0, t equals 0. Bam. OK, so that's our first point right there. All right, the next point we're going to have, now I could use 0, 2 pi, uh, 4 pi. I could use 2 pi and 4 pi instead of 0 and 2 pi. I just prefer to use 0 because it makes the calculations way easy. Way easy. All right, same idea again to find our second point. Equals 2 pi. All right, so cancel, cancel. Negative 6 t equals 1. t equals negative 1 sixth. It's okay if it's negative. So t equals negative 6 seconds. So what it's actually doing is it's, um, this guy is reversed. No, you need the whole thing, you need the whole thing. There we go. So basically, Looks like it's traveling to the right. Hmm. Hmm. Ah. Ah. That's what I probably did wrong. I didn't say wrong, but since it's no, that didn't work at all. Since the amplitude is negative three, so this is actually supposed to be upside down like this. Okay. Not going to worry about it. Not important. So. The second wave starts at t equals negative 6 seconds. So therefore, time equal the time for one um, period is 1 over 6 seconds. Frequency equals 1 over period, which equals 1 over 1 over 6, which equals 6 hertz. Six hertz. So, what is the maximum transverse speed of an element of the string? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So this is asking us. So we need to find the velocity. So we're trying to find the mag. The transverse is up and down. So what we, what we want to do is find the fastest changing change in the y direction. Okay, so the fastest change in the y direction is going to be, so this is y equals. This tells you the value of y. So what we want to find is dy dt. We'll then set it equal to 0 and solve. There we go, dy dt. Okay, so to take the derivative of this guy, we're going to do negative 0.3 because it's constant. Cosine 
of 2 pi over 1 x minus 6 t minus 1 8 and then we're going to have to use the chain rule here which is going to give us the derivative of the inside which will be negative 6 because x is constant with respect to y um, negative 6 t the derivative of negative 6 t is negative 6 and then negative 1 8 is constant with respect to y so we have 1.8 cosine 2 pi and there's still 1 6 t minus 1 8 so this will be the uh, velocity of y in the up and down direction. And it wants us to find the maximum. What is the maximum transverse speed of an element of the string? Okay, so we know that cosine, we can take the derivative of this set equal to zero, et cetera, et cetera. Or I'm gonna take the shortcut and say that I know the biggest that cosine will ever be is one. Therefore, dy dt max is going to be 1 times 1.8. So 1.8 meters per second. Hmm. I think I'll do that in blue. Add a better preferable emphasis. So 1.8 meters per second. Go back up here. Write that guy in. Alright. So I try not to go too heavy on the conceptual understanding of wave functions because um, it's just a it's just a function math so what I like to do is I like to get it in my familiar form um, so where we have amplitude sine 2 pi over lambda x minus vt plus a phase angle I then look at for the speed that was easy just bam velocity um, what is the vertical position of an element of a string yep just plug in numbers what is the wavelength? So you can just look at what lambda is, you know, or you can um, look at it from an intuitive point of view. Uh, all right, you have a sine, which is going to be repeating itself every 2 pi. 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, etc., etc., etc. And you find out where the first and second repetition are, find the distance between the two, i.e. the x value between the two, and that's going to be one wavelength. And then they ask you about frequency. Well, frequency is related to period, where period is the time between two wavelengths. So you do the exact same idea before. You have, um, you know, sine is going to repeat on 0 and 2 pi. And so you take that, um, the time it takes, the time it takes for the zeroth uh, part of the wave to start, which, you know, for us turned out to be 0. And then you find out when the, the first repetition of the wave starts, and the difference in those two times will be your period. Then frequency is just one over your period. And that's how I find that one. There's probably another easy, quick way. Eh, don't care. Don't care. I like my way better. Um, and what is the maximum transverse speed? Well, if you're looking at velocity, then velocity is going to be the derivative with respect to time of distance. In this case, distance we're looking at here is y. If we want to find the acceleration, we could then find another uh, take another derivative. So that's what I got for this one. I'm going to check real quick just to make sure I'm not completely crazy. Nah, we're good. So, all right. That's how you do this problem on to number four.